Okay, folks, good morning. Now you have something completely different in front of the screen here. This is a I don't know what I don't know what you would call this. This is made by some used to be called by made by a company called Queen's Hussars. It is a full-on resin farmhouse. Hey there. Enkinaru, welcome. Welcome back. And I've had this thing for probably probably since at least 1998. Um I don't remember who I got it from. Maybe Brookhurst Hobbies. Um, and it's pretty large. I mean, it's, it measures, let's see if these inches are accurate. It's nine inches by, it's about nine and a half by nine and a half. And it's in 20 millimeter scale, which really isn't a scale, but you know what I'm talking about. And um, got some of the figures here. I've had this thing a long time, and I've, you know, analysis paralysis, never painted it. In retrospect, it's probably good that I never painted it because um, I have a better skill set to do these sorts of things. Let's go ahead and put, let's, let's shrink myself in the corner. Hold on a second. Let's, let's make that smaller so I'm not taking up as much space. There we go. And um, yeah, it's probably a good thing I never worked on this thing. So uh, I cleaned it up yesterday, which it didn't have a lot of flash, but it did have some. And um, it's still made by a company called Lancers Miniatures. Um, and it is, of course, all the pieces fall up. Well, it's all mainly one piece, except the roof is, and this is literally one big chunk of, of resin. So if this falls on the ground, you know it's gonna chip but this is all one piece, has an interior with details. There's rubble and stuff in there. And um, let's take these figures off. I just have them here on here for scale. And this one, this was a pain to paint with airbrush. Um, because the, the Viejo primer, surface primer, is very gummy. And... Um, it gummed up on me several times, and I just ended up giving up on on some of it and just used black spray paint. It just held my nose and used black spray paint, but it was almost all done with the Vallejo primer. Um, and let's see, this this all comes apart. All one chunk. And, you know, it has detail interior. Let's see. Let's get the, let's get the Germans out of here. You know, and there's detailed damage and stuff in there. So um, I, I wish it was not damaged because that's going to be kind of a, um, another wrinkle on the whole thing, but I'm pretty comfortable with my skill set that we should be able to, I should be able to be happy with how this thing turns out, especially with how many examples are of stuff on the internet. I save a lot of things. Uh, last night I, I did a, a little bit of research of how other things were finished and what other people did. And of course, I'm going to do my own spin on it. Um, I don't think I'm going to use the airbrush for much of it other than sealing, I definitely have a lot more confidence in my my paint brushing skills. I've been paint brushing for over 35 years. I've been airbrushing for four months. <laughs> so I'm definitely more skilled in the in the paintbrush stuff. And a lot of this is gonna be dry brushing kind of things. And um it, it has a fair amount of detail. It has some interesting kind of things that are going on it that you don't normally um, probably would be missed. Along with all the damage and things on there, you've got uh, I, and some things that I didn't notice. I mean, I've had this a long time, but I haven't really taken a good look at it. 
If you look at the front of the house, above the door, there's like an address, 1760. So, um, and this is all one piece. It's, it's particularly heavy. We have a shot from something that nearly penetrated the wall. It's probably a 75 millimeter gun. Have I ever used a makeup brush for dry brushing? No. No, I've heard about them. I have so many, I have so many brushes. You have no idea how many brushes I have. Uh, just an absurd amount of brushes that we can use for this. So, um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do, I think the starting point for the whole thing, because we've got some cobblestone here. We've got some cobblestone here. We've got some brick showing on here. Um, I think I'm going to give it a light dry brush of some gray. Not everywhere, but places that are not going to be the cobblestone, for instance. And this is going to be a long pro project. You know, the secret of dry brushing, I used to use dry brushing a lot in the 90s. And I, I stopped doing it for many, many years. And, you know, obviously I don't, I don't do it for my painting. I do it for my stands and, and stuff. But the secret to dry brushing isn't that it does a crummy job. It's that you can't just throw one color on there and think you're going to be done. You've got to do like multiple layers and different colors so that it has some depth and stuff like that. And um, somebody facetiously, well, I don't know if they were facetious. They were, hey, I want you to cut out all the windows. Well, I don't want to cut the windows out because otherwise, other than it taking forever and a day, um, this might be a situation where there's actually figures in here and the people can't see them that are playing the game and they would if they were if they could look through the windows so we won't be doing that um, a part of me wants to actually do the levels first but um, we're going to basically work with grays and um, and just work our way from there it's going to be a um, I mean, I know what color I want the roof. I want the roof to be a blue-gray color. And, um, and I want the building to be kind of in like an off-white color. Um, so we're going to uh, move up from that point and, um, you know, do the cobblestone. You don't want to get bogged down in the cobblestone color before you do the rest of the building. And it's very forgiving. You screw something up. It's not like you're going to cover up any of this detail. This has very extreme detail on it. And um, this is probably going to feature in the first skirmish scenario I'm going to do. Um, this is a perfect scenario for having like a car back here that the French resistance fighters have to go in and liberate and get it off the board. So um, as we learn the rules. So um, actually before that, I may actually give this thing a coating of black in areas that somehow got missed. And I went over this quite a bit, so. Um, but I have a ton of brushes uh, that haven't even been used, and I don't care if they get abused because they're El Cheapo. But, you know, there's some things that it, it's, you can move figures all around them, but, you know, you've got areas that you're going to have to set off to the side, like in cardboard, for instance. And what I mean by cardboard is, you just take a piece of cardboard and you draw the outline of, say, this chicken coop. I don't know if this is exactly is a chicken coop, but some kind of a coop. Um, you know, you put a little piece of cardboard off to the side, divide it, and when the figures are in there, they're actually there, and then when they come out of it, they actually can be there. Um, stuff like that, you know, stuff that I'm just going to be basically running the game, so, you know, you've got a door here in the attic. Let's see if I can find where it is. Okay, you see even with spray paint and stuff, still miss some spots. Actually, it looks terrible on it, but so um, we'll need to go over those things on there. But um, yeah, that'll be a little room up there that'll be, you know, in cardboard. You know, you just draw kind of the outline and off to the side. And, uh, you know, when because, you know, you obviously can fit many people up here. You know, you can have people that are sniping from this side or also this side okay plus you know that kind of stuff so um, just because you can't physically get the figures inside doesn't mean there's not anybody in there so this is going to be kind of like a tactical role-playing game that's kind of how it plays
without all the checking for traps crap. You don't have to LARP it, you know? But um, this is going to be an interesting challenge. Uh, I think we're going to kick this out of the park. Um, it's certainly going to look better than the example that the manufacturer has on their website. It's not very inspiring. I looked at it and I'm like, mm, I would not be happy with that, um, how it turned out. But um, that's kind of the gist of it. So let's get some black. And we're going to use uh, craft paint for all this because there's going to be a lot of paint on here. And I hope I have craft paint black. Um, here's one, but it's squished big time. Here's another one. This craft paint my daughter also uses to, to paint regular stuff with. There's some in here that are just. should be enough in there and I want to use something that I actually don't care if it's a little absorbent it probably wouldn't bother me let's see can we get into outer space a little bit this would be a good time to kick in the other camera but I really haven't experimented with the other camera much let's get um, let's get these figs out of here or something happens to them. But I've been sitting this on a long time. I don't regret not having painted it. It's probably a good thing. Is I'm going to do a hell of a lot better job than I would have done even 10 years ago. I've heard about people using their makeup brush for dry brushing, but... I don't know if you can get one cheaper than $4, and hell, for $4, I can get 15 paintbrushes, and I don't care what happens to them. So. What, what I'm really bad about is throwing away brushes that are really no good anymore. I, I just, and this, this thing is actually pretty big. Look at the size of a German half-track here. It's, it's pretty big. Of course, you know, if you've got guys that are, that are storming this, this building and there's guys in the, we'll call it the garage, although you can't really fit any vehicles with that turn. They got to be really, really small. You know, you're within pistol range, you know, because it is an actual scale game. And that's what I like about it. Because uh, if you're playing with any kind of compression, you know, and you've got, you know, an inch equals, I don't know, 10 meters or something like that. Then you've got a farmhouse that's, you know, a quarter mile across. Um, this is what you see is what you get. So. All right. Where I need to put this in a place that I am not going to accidentally touch it and get paint everywhere I don't want it to be. This is certainly the most, the messiest project <laughs> I have embarked on in a long time. Let's try this. If I don't like it, well, then we'll just... Now that I know that we can use um, hand sanitizer to take paint, this paint off pretty easy. Yeah, look. You just open it and you already got stuff on you. Annoying. And that's the problem that I have with being messy. You, know, you end up getting paint somewhere and then transferring it onto something that's already done and you've got to fix that. Like, you know, painted figures, etc. All right, so let's get a brush that we don't give a shit about. The one that's not tiny. Preferably one that's been abused before, but not horrendously so. Okay. This is just a cheapo black brush. And we're going to see if we can get some of these corners in here in black. 
and I'm going to be painting things that probably will not have any handling, which means you'll never get your finger in there and, and rub it off. Let's see if we can raise this a little bit. Okay. So we got some here. So I think, thinking about it rationally, okay, order of operations. I wanna paint the things that are harder to reach first. So for instance, you would normally think, oh, we're gonna paint the floors first. And that's what I would normally do, except that the floors are easy to get to, just about everywhere. So that's gonna be, you know, I don't want to paint the walls and try to paint the walls and not touch the floor. So I think that going at it that way, we're going to do the walls first. The floor can be last. Um, I generally paint when I'm painting figures. I don't paint in, a, in, in that way because I can pretty much reach anything that I really want. Um, so I tend to paint things that I know what color they're going to be. That there's no doubt before that that's kind of the mo that i use um i can't really do that because in this case what would be the least variable in my mind would be actually the floors so i would actually create that problem for myself so yeah like this hallway this hallway is very narrow um this hallway is very narrow and you're going to have to get the walls before you do the floor because you'll be able to get to the floor. And, you know, the reality is, is none of this is really anything I can screw up. If I screw up, I just put more of this black paint and, and repaint it. But I don't want it to take longer than it has to because that's going to keep me from doing other buildings. And I've got two other buildings from this particular manufacturer. Like a round one went through like a 50 millimeter or something. Um, shoot the door and they didn't, they shot beside it. Um, I don't know if that's a, an actual casting bubble or where it's supposed to be there, but we're gonna paint it like it's supposed to be there. Uh, I got two other buildings by the same manufacturer. They're, they're city buildings. They're pretty much high rises, not high rises, but I think they're three or four story buildings. And I haven't decided if I'm going to make them Russian or Western European. They're definitely not Italian buildings. Let's put it that way. There's not a whole lot I missed, but might as well do this now, then later. And all of this painting that I had done was done in the garage, which was, it was relatively warm out there yesterday. So I tend to rush things a little bit when I'm uncomfortable. But I always think that if you're gonna sell these things, if you're gonna sell products and you don't have a stellar painting painter, don't even show them painted. Um, Essex Miniatures is famous for that. They, their painter isn't the worst, but Essex figures look a lot better than they do, in my opinion, painted on their website. You know, unless you're gonna get somebody like um, the guy that paints for, um, Legio Heroica or somebody like that. Yeah, just show you just show your wares unpainted, man. People could do the math. Imagine if Games Workshop and Wright Dwarf 
had these substandard painters in there. You think they'd sell so many figures? I don't know. I was watching some video yesterday. Um, was it yesterday or was it the day before? I don't know, it was a long weekend of kind of, see that's it. I think this is, this is all the black it needed. Oh, there's something here on the door. I watched a video yesterday or maybe the day before. Hey Chris, watching your tank painting, wondered if you've seen Dan Mercy tank battle rules, Armored Storm. If so, any impressions? No, I haven't seen him, but it's not to be dismissive, but I'm, I'm good with the rule set that I have. I don't know anything that has the amount of detail that, that I'm looking for. It's the opposite of DBA. So, um, this is uh, percentile and this is what I was playing. The rule set I'm going to be using is the, what I was using before, uh, before I left World War II. I haven't done World War II stuff in 20 years. and. That's pretty much all I'm going to do now. I'm, that's all I'm going to paint. You know, I'm I'm done with the doing the ancient stuff for a while. Ancients, medievals, and stuff. It's just going to. I don't have the energy to do this and that. And um, I've kind of moved on. So. Okay, this is good. We're going to let this guy. Yeah, I've gotten lots of suggestions. What a tanker. All the, I'm just, I've gotten to the point where I don't mind playing other games. I don't want to be the go-to guy on a set of rules anymore. So if I've got to learn something new, I'm going to relearn this game that I used to play 20 years ago. Because the rest of the stuff, I'm just, just doesn't have the amount of detail I'm looking for. And that's really, that's probably the biggest reason that I'm not, there's many reasons, but the biggest reason I'm not doing the stuff that I used to do for 18 years is because I don't think the detail of the rules merit the amount of effort that I'm putting into my painting on them. And, and, I, and I don't want to dumb things down. I'm not going to be like, well, let's just dip things. No, no, the rules need to be better. They need to have more detail that is what I'm looking for. So that's motivating for me to paint more stuff. Look, this thing had hardly anything that needed to be done to it. And, um, you know, I'm mainly a, I can get my jollies gaming on computer or uh, other, uh, other games, video games. I don't, this is like painting. So uh, I don't want to play a set of rules. Like I, you, you would never see me paint Flames of War. Flames of War is not for me. Um, it is just way too basic and, and it doesn't inspire me to read more about the period. That's supposed to be like a piece of flash, or is that legitimately here? Anyways, what I was saying is I was watching a guy who was doing a video. It was a guy I've subscribed to for a long time. I really haven't watched much of his videos because it's more, mainly a board game. And he just put another live thing out yesterday. And I, I, and I kind of caught it midstream. And he's talking about some kind of controversy or something. I don't know what the hell he's talking. I mean, are there people out there in the game scene that all of a sudden are causing a bunch of tr problems? I don't know. Maybe it was just a board game or whatever. I I don't know what the, I don't know what the hell the controversy is, but you know I'm going to do my thing, and if nobody wants to play this game, I'm going to solo it and we'll live it. I, I don't I don't care. You know I'm not going to travel with it. Um, you know, and it's a multiple reasons. It's, it's the painting reason I I said. It's the work has just gotten so incredibly busy. And uh, I don't, I just don't have it in me to create all extra problems for myself. So, yeah, work's gotten really busy and there's just no end in sight. And this is the therapy, not the playing. So, and, and I don't mind putting all this stuff in, but I get, I get really 
bummed out when people say, hey, I'll be there. Oh, I'm excited for this. I'm glad you're doing it. And they never show up. And it's like, I'm not going to do shit for other people. I'm doing stuff for me. And if you want to join me, cool. And if you don't, well, I was fine doing this by myself. And it's not me being antisocial, but, you know, it's like, if you got a buddy, and this has happened to me before, that you go to the gym with, right? And, um, and you know, it's fun to go you work out with somebody and socialize the gym. But then you get used to going with them. And then they, some reason, something happens, and they make excuses for not going. And the next thing, you're not going either because he's not there. It's like, nah, you're not going to pull me down with you, you know? So, all right, we got lots of comments here. What do we got here? Uh, I'm going to sell 25 cheapest makeup brushes possible around 4 five dollars Works one is dry brushing, but they're completely disposal after five or six uses. Now you feel I haven't gained one port, but work at various projects for fun. Yeah. You know, this is the therapy here, you know. Um, I made a lot of kind of, I made a lot of compromises the last 18 years for playing a game that was a lot of fun. The people were great. But it wasn't detailed enough for me. But I'm like, okay, well, at least it gives me a chance to play with the stuff that I have. And it just doesn't cut it anymore. It just doesn't cut it anymore um, for that kind of stuff. So I don't want to play games that are tournament-based. I'm not really a tournament-based player. I just played that stuff because I wanted to play with my own figures. So I'm just going to run the game. They're all my own figures, and there you have it. I, I'm not a fan of building things and not doing shit with them. So that doesn't really make me want to do more things. Yeah, and I have fun at shows, but I'm not excited to go to them like I used to be. Ever since COVID and they changing shit at the last minute and like, you're going to do this. Oh, we're not going to have this now. This has been canceled. I'm like, F it, I'm not going to get excited about that. I'm just going to dump this piece of shit right in the water. That <laughs> God sorted out. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. We're going to have a floorboard covered stuff. That's easy to do. I know what color I want for the roof. I might just start there. I might just start there. You know, we got these little bits of brick everywhere. And I, I'm not certain that I want to use red brick. I'm, I'm not certain that I'm going to use red brick on that. There's all kinds of little cool little details. The people that make these things don't get enough credit. And it's not perfect, but... That's pretty cool. Well, it looks like I missed a spot. That's interesting. There's like a slot here, almost for a dividing wall, but there's not one there. I don't think it needs one. Man, this thing's heavy. It's a workout program right here. This thing fits like this. Yeah, maybe they had their second thoughts about it. I guess it doesn't really need one. We're not going to, we're certainly not going to install one. All right. Let's go look for a, a mid gray. And we're not doing the whole thing in mid gray, just certain areas. Let's see what we got here. And we can mix colors if we need to, but I don't think we need to with this cheap paint. Pure gray, it's probably a little bit too light. I can mix it, but I don't want to. That's going to take extra time. English navy. That's like bluish, obviously. Yeah, like a charcoal type color or something like that. Here. That's really what I want to do. This is going to be a long process. 
process. Here's another block that's brand new, perfect. Pavement. All right, that's good. Pavement's a good color. Could probably use pavement for everything. Just lighten up as we go. Farmhouse is a great piece of terrain. Every, I don't know if it, I you know they call it a farmhouse. I don't know, this is, this is a pretty big house for the freaking, for Europe. You know, this is top tier living here, you know. I don't know when the original mold of this was made, probably in the 70s, but it's pretty decent. Let's see what we're looking at here. Now I have painted one thing 20 years ago. And it looks pretty good, but it's not, and I'm, I'm going to end up redoing this, or I'm going to end up weathering this. This is actually a 15 millimeter miniature, and uh, it's a little, it's a little too bright for my taste, but it's done with dry brushing. It turned out pretty well, so we're going to do better than this on this particular house. This was done just before I got into doing DBA. I don't remember who makes it. Musket miniatures, I don't know. So this is a, I use this as a, in 20 millimeter, it's kind of like a little barn. It's too big in 15s, honestly. But I don't do any, I don't do anything in 15s that's World War II. World War II is only 20 mil for me. So. All right. So we got this brush. This brush should do fine. If we trash it, we got many like it. I, I think the, the pavement might actually be a little too dark to start the dry brushing. It's just not going to be noticeable enough. Let's, let's try using, what was this other called? called? Pewter gray. Yeah, let's start with Peter Gray. And we're just focusing on the walls. So we're gonna to try to, looks right. I was in Germany as a kid and saw such houses, yellow one. Yeah, it's happy. It just needs to be weathered a little bit. Easy to fix. My goal with this is to make the, this the nicest piece you guys have ever seen of this miniature, which shouldn't be that hard to do. <laughs> There's not very many examples of them out there. And yes, I could airbrush this, but you know what? I don't have to do this in a garage. Um, I have a lot more control over this. And, um, and we can film it as we go because I'm not set up really to film the airbrush stuff. Which basically means that I'm bored. You know, if I'm filming all this stuff, maybe it will benefit or entertain you guys somewhat. And it keeps me going. And the problem with the airbrush is I don't, I don't want it to get into the recesses. And 
I'm just not good enough with it. I haven't practiced with it enough to, to control that part. And I don't want to have to do a wash in a place that to kind of undo stuff that I've done by accident. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that as well. Manor house, maybe, is what I would call this. But we got that, that pig sty and chicken coop that I picked up at the show recently that would work with this on the property. Those of you guys that played video games, you remember a game that came out around 19, around 2000, and it was a game that was similar to, I, have, I, didn't, I never played it, but it's very similar to um, the Tom Clancy game where you would plan your assaults on a map um, that I was also of the same vintage. But it was a game called Hidden and Dangerous. And the premise of the game is you play a squad, a fire team, really a fire team, because you didn't have more than like, I don't think, any more than six people. And you could switch in between the people. And it was all like commando type of stuff. Like you might have to knock out a, a radar installation. You might have to, I think one of the missions you had to, it was the Turpets or something like that, and it was half sunk and you had to go get a code book off of it or something like that. So you're like fighting amongst this battleship that's listing like at 45 degrees pretty cool pretty cool game it never ran great it had uh, aiming issues similar to the Grand Theft Auto series games have um, so it's hard to kind of but you know you can skulk around and stab people and that's kind of the kind of stuff that I'm going to be doing in this yes I have vehicles but it's not going to be a hey let's do 12 vehicles on something else kind of thing because Unlike DBA, this is not an invented narrative. You're going to see exactly what happens. It's not like, oh, well, I rolled a one and you rolled a six. Well, this is probably what happened. There's no room for imagination. You know exactly what happens in, the, in, in this set of rules. And does it move slow? Yeah, but you can't use a ton of figures or you'll never get anything done, especially people who are learning the game. So I'll be playing all on one side. I'll be playing all the bad guys, whoever the bad guys happen to be in this scenario. And um, make them move a lot better. I, I tried running the game at a con around 2004 and it flopped because, a couple of reasons. Uh, I had a lot of players that didn't know the system and I had to waste I wasted an hour trying to explain the game. I'm not doing that. You guys just start playing. You know, you'll figure it out as you go. It's not difficult. Your chick comes up, you have one action. What do you want it to be? Do you want to run? Do you want to reload? Do you want to, you know, throw a grenade? Do you want to, you know, what do you want to do? It's really simple to understand that. So just do it. And like I've had this building for thirty years, you know, almost almost thirty years, and uh, I'm like, okay, well, let's just do something with it. You know, what am I going to do? Not paint it again for another thirty years? No, let's just do it.
a lot of people go like, oh, I'm going to play a skirmish game, but I want a platoon on each side. So you, one person, one player is commanding an entire platoon. You're making decisions that a platoon commander is not making. This is like you're running, you're running five guys at the most. You've got a squad, you split it in two people. That kind of thing. And you're play, either playing the squad leader or the assistant squad leader. That's really what it's geared towards. But the problem with running it at a convention is you explain the rules to people that may or may not ever play the game again. Um, and our conventions here in Florida are very limited to, they have to be four hour sessions. There's, there's no other way around that. So you can't get, you, the game can't finish in four hours. It's just, it's just not going to. Not when you're wasting a lot of time explaining the rules to somebody. And it was a small scenario that I did. I mean, it was relatively small. Um, still had like eight players, but, um, you know, had them divided on both sides as, you know, cause that's kind of the normal thing, but I think I've learned some, I've learned some stuff along the years and we're going to try to put that stuff to, to use and not make the same mistakes. You know, if it ends up being something that nobody wants the kind of detail this game has, well then. I guess I'll just solo it. But I don't want to play... I'm not motivated to play a vague rules game or a game that has a vague narrative and paint more figures for it. It just doesn't motivate me. So... Oh, we're going to go ahead and paint this rubble too, even though we come back and maybe touch some of it later. Probably could do the floor as well, but this dry brushing is definitely the way to go. It, like, you just, it picks out details that you don't necessarily see. Like, there's like some bricks sitting there in, a, in, a, in that pile. I kind of want to do the bricks in a color other than red. I, you know, the traditional red color bricks. I, I don't. I don't think that that's going to be. I think I need to do a softer tone, like a brown or something like that. It's going to look too much like Colonial Williamsburg or something like that if I leave it that same color. Yeah, I can't get the airbrush in some of these places. And I'm just not that good with it. I'm never going to be as good with an airbrush as I am with a paintbrush. It's just, you know, I need another 30 years head start. So we'll seal it with a we'll seal it with a with an airbrush. You know, at least all the parts that get touchy touchy, but the reason I switched to airbrush was um, for the base coating. Um, when I ended up having to touch some of these stuff up with a spray can that I have, the spray can jammed on me twice and I got freaking spray paint all over me. You know, it, it's like the, the nozzle clogged. They just don't make them like they used to. You know, they, there was a brand I was really comfortable with and testers discontinued it. And ever since then, you got to use less than stellar um, stuff. I don't know why this is. We have a long thread here. And it's extremely toxic. Extremely toxic smelling. 
and stick up the whole garage, even with it being open. With ventilation. Let's see if that'll do it. There. So that was the um, main reason I even went to an airbrush. But it's mainly just for the base coating stuff. All right, more pewter gray. Cardboard actually works really well for as a base of putting paint on an airbrush. There we go, already making a mess. Those lids are some of the worst. Um, because the cardboard absor absorbs some of the moisture, so it makes them even drier, which is really what you want it anyways. We'll go over these doors, even though they're going to end up getting repainted. What is it? The end of the end of uh, May? I suspect this will take me. This could take me all of June to do. We're going to do this right, though. I've I've got a lot of confidence in my skill sets. So just if it looks like I'm just shellacking and throwing paint on there, don't worry. This is just a base for other paint to grab onto. And it gives these walls an uneven appearance. Okay, I think we pretty much have the base color on the inside of the, of the main house. I'm going to keep things simple and we're going to do the, the garage in the same color as a base. And then we'll do the upstairs room or what have you. And then I'll work our way to the outside. Which I'm pretty happy with this as a kind of a base layer. Extremely large broom closet. Or shellacked on here on the inside. See, this is a building that probably does not have a whole lot of natural light in it. It's got no windows. So we're probably going to, using logic, we're probably going to paint the inside of it a lighter color than the main house so that it would reflect in there a little bit more.
this is my test test to see if I am I get enamored with doing this and want to do more buildings because there's a tons of three print 3D printed stuff out there that's available that is just calling my name. Let's see what you guys are seeing on the screen. Looks a lot brighter for you guys than it does for me. Yeah. Usually the only messes that I get when I get paint on myself has to do with opening and closing the damn bottle. Other than that, I, I don't tend to get paint on myself. It's not a very... I could almost paint the suit and tie if I needed to. I suspect this is probably going to be somewhere around the neighborhood of maybe 40 hour, 50 hour project. It's going to be pretty mindless too. Not a whole lot of thinking I got to do here. If we get a little bit on the rocks, it doesn't really matter, the cobblestone. I just got to do the walls before I paint the floor because the floor is easy to reach. If I try painting the, the walls afterwards, I'm going to have to take so much time painting the walls that it just isn't going to be worth it. So I don't think the joints between the cobblestones, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like those grout in between them. We can do that on the on the actual building, but there's no grout in between them, so I, I want them to stay dark. Or at least the recesses to stay dark. Alright, we got the inside of that pretty much taken care of. It looks very rough, almost like I, I added spackle to it myself. Makes you wonder if the master one was done that way. Really rough finish on that. Let's do the inside of this door too. This is certainly the heaviest thing I've ever painted. This thing is 
a mighty weight. stairs floor. I'm going to do the walls here. Now there's like a, I don't know if you can see this, there's a, a piece of this door missing here at the bottom. I'm leaving that as is. And if it upsets me later, then maybe I can fix it. But for the time being, that's not really what I'm interested in. I'm not going to fill in that dividing wall either. And here again, I don't want the recesses in between these floorboards to be covered. Mention your rules for this game will have an RPG feel. What do you what you see is what you get. Can you describe how they work? Absolutely, Chris. Um, there's actually a a a gentleman that did uh, a description online that. Uh, they actually were for the modern version, and they basically play the same thing. But um, you can play them in condensed scales. Uh, I don't particularly care to. Uh, and this is just really similar to uh, Jeff Franz and I were coming up with our own rules in the 90s. And we never got around to it because I, I couldn't play with them every week. It moved away, and uh, it's very difficult to... I'm not very motivated to work on rules by myself. I'm a social gamer, so um, I'm not really interested in, in working stuff by myself and have nobody to show for it. And I have to explain people, well, we did this this way because of this, that, and the other. You know, it just gets really exhausting. But it was really similar to the, rule, to the rules I wanted to do. I wanted to play a game that was actual scale. And I wanted to do, or, or damn near close to actual scale. So I was using a centimeter equals, hey Ben, I was using a centimeter equals a meter for 20 millimeter scale figures. That's pretty close. Um, and you get to use metric. And I'm a fan of metric for using for these small distances. Um, the hate fractions of an inch. They're just silly. Um, but... Um, this set of rules I came across around 2002 was really close to what Jeff and I were kind of envisioning. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of what my rules were because these are very similar to what, what I was, what I had planned. But in a nutshell, these rules basically focus around, um, it's a slow motion game. Um, if you're talking about standard troop quality, we're not talking about super elite guys, we're not talking about numb skulls, just regular troop quality wise, um, which is 90% of anybody you're gonna encounter. I mean, there's, skill, there's skills between them, but as far as their actual like standard troop quality, everyone is gonna get two actions per turn. So what you do is you've got, we were using poker chips. You've got a poker chip, for instance, that has someone's name on it, okay? So it has the name that's on the back of the figures. That's why I put the names on the back of the figures. I started using numbers, and numbers doesn't work. Because you can't put a number on an actual figure. Be like, oh, that guy kind of looks like a so-and-so. So each character has two actions. So if you're, say, using a squad, you've got now 20 chips for your squad. And if you're fighting another squad, there's 20 chips for them as well. Okay, so now you got 40 chips, 40 actions per turn. Uh, you know, until they reset. Really, the, the turn doesn't really matter. It's until they reset. Um, so you throw them in a bag. And there's different ways of playing the actual rules. They, they actually suggest you make a card 
for each character and each side gets a stack of cards. But I am anti-cards because I don't think you get a good shuffle mix out of them. So I just throw them in a bag, like a big Crown Royal bag um, or a box, something you can't see inside and you pull one. That's whose action gets to go next. So they do their thing. They either move or they reload or they'll shoot at somebody they can see, what have you. And then their turn's over with. And then you pull another one. And so the same guy could go twice in a row. It's not likely. And with a mo more amount of figures you're playing on a side, it's less likely to happen. But if you're playing an extreme, some small scenario, you could get somebody that goes twice in a row. Well, what does that simulate? That simulates, a, you know, if you've seen Band of Brothers, I remember like Lieutenant Spears takes off and he goes down the hill and like nobody, everybody's like in awe and they don't get a chance to shoot at him. It's those fog of war type of situations that are rare, but they could happen. Um, so that's kind of the gist of the whole of the of the whole game. Within that whole framework, you have leaders, and whether they're junior leaders or or or, or senior leaders, and they have different leadership values. So it's just a regular guy that will also get two actions, but then he gets. Depending on his seniority or his abilities, he might get one or two. I think you could get three tokens, but I've only seen one or two. Other tokens that are of a different color, um, that have the person's name on them, that they can use to activate someone else to give them an action within line of sight and distance of that particular leader. So for instance, if you have a squad leader that is attached to a heavy machine gun, and the now, now you've got the gunner's chance they could activate the shoot. Now you could have, you know, which he has two tokens or any number of tokens that that junior leader that's that's right next to him um, can tell him to, you know, shoot again. So it, you can manage, you know, your 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 teams and what your emphasis on what you're trying to do is based on your leadership skills and obviously your chance. You know, the radius of, the, of their distance is, is a certain thing. And, you know, because you can have jams. So, you know, you've got, you know, you, you have a jam and the assistant gunner doesn't come up. The main guy's got to do the unjamming. And, and so the vehicles work the same way. Vehicle cr crews work the same way. You've got multiple people in a vehicle. And when the gunner comes up, you can shoot, but only if the gun's loaded. So, you know, he shoots. All right. So you don't want the gunner to come up again before the loader comes up. Or he's going to waste his turn because there's there's nothing in the chamber. So if you've got a tank commander, you know, assuming it's not a, a two man turret or a one man turret, he can he can basically say, "Hey, loader, go ahead and reload." And then when the gunner comes up, even if the loader himself didn't come up, he at least got another order in. So it's that whole how that all works, and it drives a narrative that's very interesting. For me, you know, you throw a grenade. Well, let's see if you landed. You didn't. Okay, roll for deviation. It could land somewhere really interesting and create all kinds of chaos. Was there a battle, face a battle with Yahoo group? I don't remember. If so, I hope someone grabbed whatever files there were before all the groups got deleted. I've already created a Facebook group for it like three years ago. So once this gets going, um, I plan on posting on there and, and we'll see it take off from there. I don't actually know the... I don't know that the author is actually on Facebook, but um, I don't know why the core rules are not available for sale, um, even virtually. But, you know, this may not be anybody's cup of tea, but it's my cup of tea. So, and I don't plan on running it in a tournament. So if something in the rules I come across doesn't make sense, I'm planning on changing it because, you know, this is kind of this is kind of my thing. It's not like ancients where I'm not familiar with ancients. I I live and breathe World War II stuff. Ranges or like crossfire with everything in range. If you can see it, no, no, there's ranges, but like you know you can shoot like uh, you know a Mauser can shoot like six feet away. I watched a, a crossfire and I'm like, it's not for me. It's just a little too vague. Um, What's that, that modern set of rules, which looks really interesting, but it isn't after I played it. Um, force on force. It's too vague for me. It, it doesn't motivate me to, to paint individual guys. Um, 
So who am I doing it for? I'm doing it for me. So you guys can come along. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll hate it. But it is what it is, you know. The scenarios that are in the actual rules are, in my opinion, not very good. Um, you know, and, and I'm not necessarily interested in, in running maybe stuff that's balanced. It's almost like a role-playing game, you know. Did we win? Well, do you think you won? You know, it, it's, it's not important. It's the narrative. It's, it's almost like you're creating your own movie. We're gonna do the outside in the same color. The, the, the outside that has like stucco and stuff. I'm gonna do that in the same color. So that's kind of the gist of the rules. Um, the vehicles, when there's a vehicle present, there are move, there are vehicle impulse movement chits that when they come up, everybody's vehicle, I believe, or maybe there might be an impulse per side. Um, so yeah, it's is it clunky? Sure, but I, the more you the more you play it, the smoother it'll go. And you just need to pace yourself and not try to do you know a company size battle the first time you pull it out. You know, um, it's actually really nice. There's some there's some holes there in the if you can see that in the wall. So I've watched other games. Um, the game that's that I'm not playing that is the closest that I would appreciate would be Chain of Command. Because Chain of Command has kind of an interesting command thing. But Chain of Command has this thing like you lose two guys. And like I get to pick which two it is, assuming it's not a special figure. And like that doesn't interest me. Like sometimes one guy just gets picked on, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't like the, that type of thing. Un unrealistic control that you have. You know, maybe other people do. I, I don't, you know. Um, bolt action. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Not for me. Other people want to play it. That's just fine. You know, the rules are, I mean, they're like six inches thick, but I got them covered in plastic. And it's because there's a rule for everything. And it's not written by Phil Barker. Which, you know, I think the world of Phil Barker, but I'm tired of being tortured looking for stuff in his rules. I'm just not going to do it anymore. You know? I, I, I don't want to play abstract games anymore. I, I don't... You know, so that's any ancient game, you know, whatever. I'm just not interested in doing it anymore. And then we're not leaving it in this color. We're just kind of using this as a base. I said, if I airbrush this, I'd probably do a shit. I'd screw something up. And I just, I'm just, I don't feel like I'm in control. Like the scouting game for deployment, chain of command, not the game itself. Yeah, I don't like D6. When I started playing DBM, what's this D6 thing? I mean, it, it works. It works, but it's just, I'm a percentile guy. So it's a percentile type game. So again, my entire motivation for this is that I want to paint this World War II stuff that I've had forever. And it's for me. And if people don't have the patience for it, well, they don't have the patience for it. But this is what I'm going to play. This is what I'm going to play with the stuff that I create. I'll play other stuff, you know, but I'm not supplying any of this stuff for it, you know. How does Face of Battle do morale? So, um, the rules that, the rules I was coming up with, you'd have a percentage of chance to hit somebody. And you either hit them or you didn't. Or if they were in a window, like if you got a guy in a window, he would be just as easy to hit as somebody who wasn't in a window. But if he was 
Um, you would roll for hit location on the body, and if it hit somewhere that was covered by the wall, you would have to try to penetrate that wall. And it sounds really difficult, but it makes sense. And that's why, you know, 50 caliber is so effective, because it'll go through the wall. You have no protection by it, you know. But um, the way they handle it is is the, the effect and the hit chance are all in the same die roll uh, when it comes to, you know, rifle fire. When it comes to small arms, it's all handled the same way. Um, and um, I wouldn't have done it that way, but they they did it. I like to do it separately because you just roll to see if you hit. And if you roll like 90 something, you know you're not going to hit and you move on to the next guy. Not like, okay, it's like a 67. Well, did it hit? Or maybe it just caused a morale check on him. But, you know, you get, you could, uh, there's many different levels of morale. Wounds are not specific as to, you know, being wounded in a certain place, but it does affect you. And, um, there's some things that you have to basically take an action to snap out of it. So they can, they can, um, there's varying levels of, of your effectiveness that can be affected just by not, not even wounding someone, but having to make, to expend uh, morale. I was, when I was doing my own set, I was keeping track of all the ammo. The way it's handled here is um, if you roll really poorly, it could cause a, I, I, I may not be using the right terminology. I haven't played it in 30 years. But it would cause a, I'll call it a mishap. And then you roll in the mishap and see if it's basically a reload that you have to do or it's an actual jam. Um, and if it's a reload, then you just have to spend one action to reload. So, something you learned about Barker from reading Old Slingshot Issue. He was convinced to start doing research by none other than Liddell Hart. Huh. I've never read Liddell Hart stuff, but I'm familiar with him. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Barker himself. I'm just, you know, I'm just looking for a different type of, of a game. It doesn't motivate me to paint, you know, German figures if every one of them is the same. I've looked at lots of rule sets. i got a friend of mine that really likes uh, uh, Battle... What's it called? Battle... The one made by Easy 8 Enterprises. But the grenade range is four inches. So you're telling me you can't throw a grenade from this window into here? Oh, because it's condensed. Well, I don't want to play that game, you know? Um, if the game is that condensed, then you should be able to stack more people in, in, the, in, the, in the buildings, you know? You're, you're, you're taking up a whole lot of space. So it just depends on what you want to do. I've played those one to five scale World War II games. That's what I started playing. And they just don't uh, motivate me to, to get to, for my creativity. So, we'll see. Like I said, I plan on making this the nicest painting job on, on this particular casting you guys have seen. And um, it's going to take some time. But now that we've got some forces, and after this is done, we can run our first scenario. So I plan to run this exactly like a role-playing game. None of this. Well, let me see the rules. What do they say? Nope. That happens to you. I'm a pretty... I'm many things, but fair is one of them. You know, I don't... I don't want to get everybody killed. I don't want to play a, a war game that isn't balanced or that isn't... Um, well, the scenario could be unbalanced. But I'm just... You know, that's not fair. That's the, what, what purpose does that serve me? You know? Well, we'll find out if we like Peter Gray. As this, if not, we can just paint over it. I, I think this is the way to do it. I'm picking out some details that aren't that noticeable, anyways. We're going to end up 
dry brushing different colors on top of this, but this just kind of helps us identify where some of these really cool details that the sculptor or the builder of this thing decided to put in here. I really do want this to turn out well because I'm excited to, to, to try all kinds of things that are available out there. There is just an unbelievable plethora of exciting stuff that, that has been made with 3D printing. I don't plan on doing any of the 3D printing myself. This is what I do. I, I do this. I don't, I don't 3D print. That shit's frustrating. Although there's, there's somebody that, that, um, that I follow that just said they were doing a bunch of CAD files. I'm like, shit, I, did, I used to do CAD. But you, know, you can't do it all. You have to decide what you're, what you're willing to do. You know, I can't do things in CAD and then have somebody paint for me. I'm the painter, you know? You gotta delegate some responsibilities out. So I figure there's, there's some people that are gonna be better at doing 3D printing than I'm ever gonna be. And uh, this hobby has never caused me any frustration. This is all, this is all good. Yes, will this take a long time? Absolutely. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm going in with the mentality that it is going to take a long time. It's if you think, oh, I'll be done in one afternoon and it takes weeks. You're like, what the, you know, you're angry, you know, you, no. No, I know how long this takes. How long, I know how long this takes. And that's why I had to stop doing the stuff I've been doing for a while. I'm never going to go around to, to paint the things that I have, much less all the cool stuff that's out there. Yeah, there's all kinds of detail. I'll turn this in a second. I'll show you what, what I'm talking about. There's all kinds of detail that's on here that just isn't necessarily noticeable. So whoever made this original one, kudos to them. They have a cafe that is dying to be used in a sniper's nest. I have a cafe I've already named, and I haven't even bought it yet, and I know which one I'm going to do. So the, the Petit, yeah, what is it? The Petit Souffle. Right? I think, that's, I think that was the name of it. Why am I having a... See, i got to do this stuff before I go crazy. And, and you know, I'm, I go senile, and I, I, can't, I can't think of these things. The Petit Souffle. Yeah, it's going to be a green sign. So I do like the Eastern Front the best, but I think that using his partisan troops is just perfect for um, the beginning learning stuff with. And, and I've already got some of these Western buildings, so I'm like, you know, I'm interested in all of them. I want to do the. I got lots of bricks to do. I want to do Italy with them. You know, the 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 theater that really I I rarely see anybody do Italy. Oh, but it's an infantry war. Perfect. This is an infantry game. An infantry centric game. I don't mind you using washes, but I don't want to not dry brush and then have to use a black wash for everything. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm leaving a black wash everywhere I want. I do that the same way with tanks. It just works for me. May not be everybody's cup of tea, but... Oh, I was going to show you the front of this house. It's, it looks a lot more like a ghost house than it does to me. It's not that bright. It's just a kickback from this light. But there's all kinds of details that are in there that aren't necessarily completely obvious. Yeah, you can't dry brush this. And okay, okay, we're done. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to do more than that. You know, you're going to dry brush. You're going to put five or six or seven or eight levels in a, you know. There's masters out there that have done some stuff on YouTube that, 
I can't wait to to uh, try that that stuff myself. You know, the vehicles need to, the 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 buildings need to look as good as I'm happy with the figures. So with my figures, so this is not an overnight project. You're gonna be tired of seeing this. Just like when I was painting those land schnecks, I got probably got tired of people typing land schneck down. Yeah, you're gonna be tired of this damn farmhouse by the time it's done. But it's kind of a big project. It's kind of almost too big of a project for my first real outing as one. But I already have the building, so I'm not really throwing money at the problem. I'm just throwing effort at it, I guess. For fun, been buying basic painted ACW figures and touching them up and rebasing for Rally on the Flag, then take them from a four or five on the Gajo scale to six. What's Gajo? What's it stand for? Gajo scale. Ooh. All right, I need to find my good tweezers. And they were here just a moment ago. Before I started. I'm sure they're in here. I usually put them around the rim, but they're not. They're not there. That's not them. That's not them either. This whole taking your glasses off the paint sucks. It's annoying. It's like, man, I gotta, I gotta paint all this stuff before it gets worse. I used to paint in 2020, now I'm painting my nearsightedness because I can't see things up close. It was here just a second ago. Well, let's see if we can let's see if we can use this one for what we need to do. There's these little fibers from something. There we go. Not pretty prominent, but I'm looking at everything with a six plus loop, basically with my nearsightedness. So I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that, I don't know that I'm painting any better. I'm just appreciating all the little details that the painter did. Oh, lovely. Mr. Gaho sells painted figures and used to resell used figures that it rated on a one to 10. Basically a six was war games quality for average painters. Nice. Well, I strive for, I can't do it any better than this. <laughs> and if it means I'm not painting a bunch of stuff, well, I'm just not painting a bunch of stuff, but. I see things that are, I like painting more than my painted, and I don't get discouraged. I'm like, all right, we got to kick this up a notch. And what I really like is when you get a compliment from somebody who I admire their painting. It says, oh man, good job. And you know, it's, it's from somebody who's, I consider a master and an inspirational painter. And that's really the, the best, well, the most important thing is that you're happy with it. But when you get a compliment from somebody you really admire, yeah, that's... But you know, maybe I did something and they did, and and they like it too and it inspires them. You know, it's just a freaking trick. This is just movie magic, as I used to say to my daughter. I don't know what the hell is in that little house, but it could be interesting. We'll make a little cardboard cutout for a little room that. Yeah, because this is the, this is the type of game. If there's a door, it leads somewhere. And if it's locked, blow it open. It's that kind of a game. So you know the game only simulates probably thirty seconds of time by the time you're done with it. But it 
just different than anything else that's out there. Used to be at a store con, sold Tommy Gunner World War II painted figures. It's patience and technique, something you lack. Yeah, well, the, it's really patience. It's, it's, it's really experience. And the experience comes in like, if things start going sideways, you've done the end result enough and know what it looks like. So you don't end up throwing more labor at a problem that you're just not going to be able to make it better. And I, I make mistakes. I make things that I'm not happy with. But I think that when I'm 10% of the way through, I can kind of see it's not going to turn out how I want it to. And I can change tack. Um, and that's really valuable because it keeps you from being frustrated. So... You know, this is going to be like when you take a road trip to Historicon from here. It's going to take 14 or 15 hours. And you know that going in. And you're okay with it. If you end up going to Tampa, which is two hours away, and there's a massive traffic jam, and you can't get off the interstate, and it takes six hours, you're, you're ready to come unglued because you hadn't planned on that. Here, I'm planning on this is going to be a long haul. This is going to be a long haul, and it's hopefully it'll be a trip worth taking. You know, unlike cooking, unlike baking, unlike doing lawn work, when I'm done painting this, I won't have to paint this again. It's not going to unpaint itself. So I actually don't have a problem with these things that take a long time because you don't have to do them again. It's not like, oh, it's time to trim the bushes again this week, you know. And this may not even be grayish, but this is just kind of a, a color. I want some of the dark left on there. We're not going to do the cobblestones because I, I want the, the the space in between the cobblestones to be um, black or damn near black because of just um, fungus or something like that. You go to a place like St. Augustine or like that and you got all the cobblestones. They're, there's no grout in between them. They're just laying there. There's mold and shit on there. And, I'm probably enjoying this a hell of a lot more if I'd have done this 20 years ago. Oh, a little too much paint. That doesn't matter. It'll all straighten itself out. I'm not going to be adding any more loose bricks because it's already got plenty of them on there. Uh, we are going to be adding tufts, no doubt. And I'm probably going to add some mold and stuff. Some, I mean, nothing major, but the stuff is, is out in the open. So it's got to look, it's got to look as good as the figures that I'm happy with. Although I'm not going to be happy. We're going to keep tinkering with it until we get it where we need it to be.
And when you and when you when you dry brush, every dry brush level you put on top of the first one makes it look exponentially better. I, I saw a, uh, a guy that he'd done the Stalingrad thing that was just amazing, amazingly. It would actually made me sad that he probably wasn't playing with a set of rules that would do it justice. But anyways, it was absolutely beautiful Stalingrad, or horrific, depending on how you want to look at it. It was very realistic, and it was like red brick, like freaking everywhere. And I'm like, dude, what did you, because you could go on like... Um, you can go on Amazon or any of those sites like that where you can buy things bulk and buy a bunch of like just red bricks. Did you do that? And he said, no, uh, I cut off, I cut it out with balsa wood. And uh, I believe it's a guy from Australia that did it. I'm like, holy smokes. But it looked good. And he had a lot of loose bricks. You know, I, when I buy buildings, I don't have any intention of buying any more that are damaged. I think that's my plan. It is not intentionally buy any that are damaged. It's just a lot less work to not do them damaged. stop for a moment and check on the girls. I hear them move around. This thing actually has, I know it may be crude in some ways, the way it's um, cast, but it's got really some amazing details. Have you used any of those grime, mold, or rust washes? I have made my own using um, I forget exactly what it's called glaze medium uh, I've made my own um, but I haven't used them a whole lot we're going to be experimenting with that for sure In, you know, in certain places. The, the real test for this is going to be when I get to doing trees. Because I've got this concept I'm kind of kicking around. And if I can pull it off, it's going to be pretty amazing. And I may not be able to pull it off exactly how I think it's going to be without even messing with it. But I think I'm going to be able to do something pretty cool. Because I don't like tree sets that are already preset, and that's where the trees are. And I don't like individual trees that constantly fall over that you see the big tree trunk. So it's got to be something in between the two. And uh, Barnes White, welcome. Got a little bit of a late start today. I was doing some other things this morning. And it's not like I was going to, it's not like I'm going to be able to get this thing done one day. I don't really know what's going on here. Maybe there's some dust or rubble on the roof there. We'll, fit, we'll, we'll have that sort itself out. It's not like if I would have started at my normal time, I'd be able to get this done in a day. I have a feeling this is going to take probably a month to do. 
I don't plan on working any, on anything else until this is complete, so. And, and I don't want to just super detail one wall and then work on the rest of it. It's all going to come up together. Is that a little door that's there? No, it's not a little door that's there. So I do not have a whole lot of experience painting buildings. I do have a lot of experience painting things and I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, 20 years ago I would, have start, I would have started painting the cobblestone and I would have created a nightmare for myself because all this that I'm doing, I would end up having to redo the cobblestone in certain places and I'd be really frustrated. I'm like, nope, you do the cobblestone stuff last. You, know, you gotta get the walls where they need to be. Because I, I can't paint this the way I normally would do a figure. The normal I would do a figure is I paint exactly what I know. I have no doubt what color I want it. Especially if it's something that covers a large area on the figure, like a tunic or, you know, the pants or something like that. Like, I know he's going to have blue pants. I paint the blue pants. Yeah, you can't do that here just because of hard to reachness of this. All right, I'll be right back. I need to check on the girls. And... We'll be right back in a few. Boy, it looks like crap on the, on the video for you guys. Oh, well, I'll try to do better.
Go for it, Patey. Welcome. Welcome back. You've been on here before. It's the beginning of a project that's going to take a long ass time. But we're going to do it right or we're not going to do it at all. So. I've had this thing for certainly from the 1990s. And I don't know who the hell I got this from. Probably somewhere across the pond. I don't think Brookhurst Hobbies had it. That's who I was ordering most of my World War II stuff at the time was Brookhurst Hobbies. I don't think they ever carried Queen's Hussars. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I probably ordered this across the pond. And got all three buildings at the same time. I got this one and the other two... Um, which are built-up buildings. I call them high-rises, but they're really only four stories. So, Yeah, like this, a cellar, like the first four. Yeah, I think it's four to total. Anyhow, those are also very confined. They're also destroyed. Destroyed-ish. I guess this would be a destroyed building, but not one that's been leveled. <laughs> Leveled is like you don't have any height advantage at all. It's just a pile. <laughs> just hide amongst the pile. So I got probably 25 minutes in, and then I'm going to have to stop. And we're going to pick this up over and over and over and over again. This is going to be a month long project. And I mean for the month of June, I don't mean for May, because. If it's a month-long project for me, I'm, I'm off to a late start. <laughs> We're just going to get kind of the, a base color on this. It's, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a base. It might have some gray in it, but it's not going to be a, a base gray building per se. going to add more and more color on here so we do leave some shadows on there I do not like using black as a wash because it ends up going everywhere I'd rather just paint it black and then dry brush over it it's just how I like to do things second coat to this wall. <laughs> Bringing it up. And we'll end up putting another color on top of it, but that gives you kind of a uh, an area that is that is lighter in some areas that will allow that other color to shine up a little bit more. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to have less of a chance of having mistakes that I have to fix using this method than, than with airbrushing. I'm just a noob when it comes to the airbrushing. You guys for weeks are gonna be saying, you done with that house yet? Nope. No, nope. we're gonna be here a while. But at the same time, this is gonna be mindless. This is a pretty mindless activity. Mindless and forgiving. You know, the folks that I really admire their painting, they don't take any shortcuts. You know, there's better ways to do things or what have you, but I've seen some of their stuff. There's one guy that I really admire his painting his vehicles. He takes even longer and is even more anal retentive than I am. So, 
doesn't bother me that things take a long time to do. Sometimes it's just got to be in for the long haul. Yeah, see, we're, we're building that color up. And then if we want to make this, you know, a little bit different, then we can paint the other colors on there, water down a little bit, and there's going to be some irregularities between this base color, this, this primer. Think of this as the primer color. On it. It is a hefty chunk of resin. I don't know how the hell it made it across the pond without breaking. I have a couple of the buildings that actually do have, they have clean breaks on them. Um, the, the interesting thing about it is, is I have, I've gotten some resin things that just smell horrendously bad, like the actual resin. This stuff never did. Well, I don't want to eat this stuff, but you know, it wasn't like toxic smell wise. But yeah, this is a hefty chunk of resin. And I want to say this was like $40 US or $50 US for this thing. So I think the three buildings are close to 200, but I don't remember, it was so, so long ago. But stuff that I got before I was even married. And just never did anything with it. And I'm glad I never did anything with it because my skill set back then wouldn't have been as, as good as it is now. I'm a lot more patient. And I've learned a lot by other people that have shown examples of their work. And are willing to, you know, say, you know, hey, what'd you do here? And not like, oh, I'm not going to tell you because I do this for now. Just, what, you want to take your secrets to the grave? You know, I don't, I don't hide stuff from people. So we've got these areas that have brick here. When we get to them, we're going to paint with a grout color and then dry brush the, you know, control dry brush the bricks and then pick individual bricks out when we get to that. So that's the plan on that. It's way too early to be doing the bricks because um, I'm not doing that until I get the wall color exactly where I need it to be. Otherwise, I'm just going to even slow down the process even more. I don't think I'm going to use, you know, your traditional red brick from Williamsburg, Virginia as the brick color for this house. It's just going to look really out of place. It's going to look like it's in North America, and that's not what I want the intention to be. But I'm going about this totally different than I would have gone about it 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I'd be like, okay, let's paint the cobblestone streets. And then every time I'm doing this dry brushing of this rubble, I'm damaging the stuff I've already done. I don't want to redo anything that, that I have done. The cobblestone, the floors, that's easy to reach. I'm doing the stuff that's difficult to reach without... Uh, you know, imagine painting these walls when your floor inside the house is exactly how you want it. You're going to be touching up all kinds of stuff. That's no good.
Luckily, I did take pictures of what this looked like before. I like to do that. I like to say, hey, this is what this looked like before. And then afterwards, like, man, how did it look? It's just a trick, dude. It's all smoke and mirrors. out here. So yeah, really similar to uh, Hidden and Dangerous. Or what I remember of it, I, I should say. It's been a long time since I play that, and I'm not a retro gamer. I don't. I don't like to play old video games that that look like crap. That may, may you have to squint your brain to see what's going on. That's what I think sometimes when we end up playing. Um, Command and Colors Napoleonics with actual figures, and they got the hexes. Sometimes you got to squint your brain to see what exactly is going on. All right, that guy's in a hex, and there's only one tree, but that whole thing's a wood hex. I'm like... Uh, this game, you see a door, you can go in. And you can break it down. I'm surprised this brush actually isn't in worse shape how I've been abusing it with this, but we got many more where this one came from, so. I won't put a magnetic bottom on this one. <laughs> totally unnecessary. So the next color we're going to add is probably a buff-like color on top of this one to the outside. That's what we're going to do next. And we're going to go ahead and start on it. Careful, it doesn't have much pink in it, or we're gonna turn it. It's gonna go in a direction we don't want it to go into. There's two candidates right there. He's a third candidate. I think that's the three I was thinking of at a half. And I could mix the colors if I want to, but honestly, it's a bit unnecessary. Fawn. It's going to be, I think, a little too pink. 
That's definitely a no-go. Bye-bye. Country Tan. Okay. This is the most drab of the three, so we're going to start with this one. Country Tan. Well, this isn't a country somewhere. I'm just going to rinse that. We'll mess that one later. Let's grab another brush. going to look super brown compared to the other one, I bet. Eh, maybe not so much. This is just for the main color of the stucco. Saw it. I'm like, let's deal with that piece of like a, a loose um, brush hair or something. There's some areas like the, the stones that are on the corners, the cornerstones. We'll have to repaint them and then go over them again, but this is just the main color of the building. Got some stones that looks like this thing is sitting on. I just didn't want to put it on top of black. I want to have already some highlighted colors to work off. Of. Trying to avoid the brick on purpose. working our way up slowly. It's gonna be seven or eight, nine different colors to get it all to work together. That's what the pro level stuff I've seen out there looks like. Yeah. Draw brushing is an effective tool, but you can't try to get there in one go. It's a slow build up.
got the house number on there. It's pretty prominent. For a second there, I thought, like, oh, does that mean this house was built in 1760? Nope. That's just a house number. Right? Not worried about the rumble piles at this point. You gotta make the rumble piles look different than the outside of the building, or it's just not gonna look right. all these all the same color at least haven't deviated from it just yet maybe by the time I get done we'll make tinker with it but some gray in there. I don't want to do that. Good timing on doing this. Why is that good timing? You getting ready to do some buildings? I don't know, maybe you can learn by some of the mistakes I'm gonna make. I don't think I'm gonna make that many mistakes. I think this is very forgiving. You're just gonna get tired of seeing me paint this. I'm not doing anything else till this building's done. And I have, I have a feeling it's gonna take a while. That's okay. 
Gonna look stellar. Before you start yours, yeah, I'll show. Maybe I'll show you what not to do. I don't think you're gonna learn a whole lot from that. I'm, everything I'm, everything I'm doing with this thing is gonna be really forgiving. Which is why I'm not using the airbrush. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to. That's gonna discourage me. Maybe I'll do some smoke shading or something like that with the airbrush. But short of that, I'm I'm steering, steering clear of that. This is I can't come to grips with that. Making a mess, cleaning it, and all that stuff. This is you know just thinning this kind of paint. You know is uh, you have the same casting, or you just have buildings. Honestly, I wish this thing was not destroyed. But it might actually be more difficult to do if it wasn't. We'll find out after I'm... See, I did a boo-boo down here. We got some paint down here where I didn't want it. But it's not a big deal. Let's, let's move that out. Um, we'll find out after I'm done with this whether or not I want to get more destroyed buildings or ones that are in good shape. I may actually find out that these destroyed buildings are more forgiving. Could very well be the case. Or damaged buildings. So obviously we're going to still put more layers of it on here, but let me put my glasses on so you can see what the hell have I I've done. And the pictures on. What you guys are seeing just doesn't do it justice. It just washes the color out a whole lot. But We're going to leave the inside like this for now so you can tell the difference of the base color and how we're going to bring it up. We'll put the brick in after we're completely done with this wall. And we've got some other stones here that I can foresee them being the same stone color family as the ones on the end. So if we do these darker, which is probably going to be the case, then we'll do these darker as well and we'll dry brush those on top. This is just me spouting things off, just kind of my, you know, what my intentions are. Yeah, it's, it's coming along. It's going to take a long time. We got a hit by a 75 millimeter gun that didn't get, didn't go in, at least a 75. I, I was thinking it was a mistake and was supposed to be drilled through, but the other side has nothing on it. So um, we'll just leave that alone the way it is. But yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long process and uh, I'm excited. It's, I have zero stress doing this. 15 millimeter 3D repurposed Arab buildings. Oh, that's much easier than this. Arab stuff's cool. Speaking of which, let me get my Arab buildings out. I really like the way these guys turned out. I think this is old JR miniatures. Well, one thing that I did, and I'll probably do this as well, is the colors that were dry brushed here on the ground, which is like some yellows and stuff, you can see that they've been kicked up on the side like dust. We'll probably do the same thing here as well. Whatever color we do this rubble, some of that, some of that's gonna work its way up there. I really like the way these little guys turned out. They got a nice stucco finish on them. This, this sculptor did a really good, good job on it. Happy doors. Yeah, air stuff's cool to paint. I like the Middle East, Middle Eastern things. It's, Exotic. So anyhow, one step closer to uh, the goal, but this is going to be a month-long project. I suspect we'll probably be done sometime in June, but it's going to look stellar. 
uh, or I'm just going to keep working on it until it is. So, Anyhow, thanks for stopping by, folks, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one at uh, 1760 Dead End Drive. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for coming by. We'll see you guys on the next one.